Good morning, friends. My name is Jeremy Rutledge, and I'm senior pastor at Circular Congregational Church. And it's just my delight to welcome you to our online morning worship on this beautiful Earth Sunday morning. Uh, we say in the spirit of our progressive and inclusive faith that whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey this morning, you are welcome here. And we're always glad to gather in that spirit. As we gather, I do want to remind you that we have a very special event uh, coming up this week. Thursday and Friday evening of this week, we have our spring lectures in theology and ethics. And we're especially delighted to welcome Professor Viet Thanh Nguyen. Uh, Viet Thanh Nguyen teaches at the University of Southern California. He's a winner of the Pulitzer Prize. And if you are not familiar with his work, it is powerful, prophetic, and bitterly funny. He is one of the finest public intellectuals we have and an anti-colonial ethicist and storyteller. I hope you will join us. It's going to be wonderful. And as we take a moment to pass a word of peace, we will put up the flyer uh, for Viet Thanh Nguyen's lectures so you can see it. Uh, and down in the comments or in the description, we'll have some information for you as well if you'd like to register or share the event. So now as we take a moment to pass the peace, I invite you to text a word of peace, to whisper a prayer for peace, or just to have a quiet, peaceful moment for yourself as we share in a time of peace. This morning, I'll invite the sound of a, a smaller bowl. This is the bowl that we sometimes uh, carry in our backpack and take with us to the woods. And it sounds uh, beautiful there among the branches. So this Earth Day, as I invite the sound of the bowl, I invite you to take a deep breath to ground ourselves in the beauty of this day and in the place where we live. And to join our hearts with each other and with all beings in worship together. Light this candle as a symbol of the mystery that is within us, among us, and at the same time beyond us. This mystery brings us together as one. No matter who we are, no matter where we are, we are one. On this Earth Sunday, even as we continue to work for a more just world for all, we delight and ground ourselves in and celebrate the beauty of our natural home. 
in that spirit, I invite you to join me in the call to worship. The pandemic stretches on and the vireo sings from the branch. The trials and protests continue and the tide rushes over the fiddler crabs. The debate over health care, gun reform and a living income rages and the moon arcs over the marsh. The climate crisis is here and the strawberries grow in the field, the tree frogs quietly climb, the wind rustles the branches, shaking golden pollen over it all. God of this day, gather us in worship that we may hear it, touch it, taste and feel it, and then respond to all of our neighbors in love. Amen. Good morning. Uh, this is the time for children, and I'm really happy to be out here uh, in the garden to talk to you for just a moment. So when I was a little boy in Hawaii, one of my favorite things to do, maybe my very favorite thing to do, was to go outside and look in the flower beds for toads. Uh, this was something I learned to do with my dad. I think he had a lot of fun doing it as well. And sometimes we would go out at night with a flashlight and look in the flower beds and we would always find toads. Uh, and I thought toads were really wonderful and I liked to see them and I liked knowing that they were there. And so sometimes when I would go to bed, I would remember that there were toads just outside in the flower bed. Uh, and I really enjoyed knowing who else was living where I was living. Since we moved to South Carolina, I've noticed we have some toads, uh, but there's something else we have here. When I work in the garden, sometimes I see skinks and they're kind of shiny lizards and they have a blue black sheen. They're really beautiful and colorful. Uh, and I'm always excited when I can see a skink when I'm working outside. And it's a little bit like when I was a boy. Sometimes now I go to bed and I'm happy to think of the skinks that are just outside. And again, I'm happy to remember who else lives where I live. So if you're a kid, I'd invite you to think about uh, the animals and plants near your home and the ones that you think are beautiful and the ones that you notice. And that's part of what we're doing this Earth Sunday is celebrating all of the animals and plants, all of the other beings with whom we share our home. Will you join me in a short prayer? God of the wild world, we thank you for all the animals and plants with whom we share our home. Help us remember to care for them as we care for each other. Amen. Hello, my name is Michael Griffin, and I'm offering this morning's prayer of confession and renewal of life. Please join me in this time of communal confession. O oh, wild spirit, we confess that we often conceive of places in only three dimensions. The colors and textures that cover the length, width, and height of a place in the moment or in our memory. The feel of that place in that one instant, a favorite recollection or a meaningful event frozen in time. And even when we sense the passage of time and location, it can be short. The length of a sunset, a meal with friends, or a weekend camp. We confess 
that we often fail to open ourselves to the ever-changing impermanence of the places we inhabit or remember. In the span of minutes, a heron can alight or a gator can sink its head below the surface. Do we see the marsh both with and without the creatures? In the span of days, the azaleas can burst into bloom, only to later shrivel and fall. Do we see the plants, both resplendent and ordinary? In the span of years, the maritime forest narrows, the Spartina recedes, the spring tides flood more regularly, and the groundwater becomes more salty. Perhaps a bird species arrives a few days earlier, or fewer pollinators come feeding. Do we see the coast both as resilient and impaired? Over the span of generations, species arise and are extinguished. Rivers slither across the land like snakes. Cities are built and inundated by the sea and shorelines form and vanish. Do we see our home both as a vibrant ecosystem adjacent to the sea and as a marine memory that future generations might explore with scuba gear? O oh, wild spirit, help us to love the mystery with our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. To love ourselves as we love the mystery. To love our neighbors as ourselves. And to love the earth as our neighbor. And to see that the earth, which is our neighbor, is also our self. And it is all the mystery. Teach us to be love and be peace, here and now in the present moment, but also through time, and inspire in us the wisdom to love the future earth so dearly that we are called to action today. Amen. I'm Sarah Rutledge. This morning's scripture reading is Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 31 from the Inclusive Bible. As we listen to the words about the greatest commandment, let us think expansively about who is our neighbor. Our neighbor is every creature, every living thing with which we share our one true home. One of the religious scholars who had listened to them debating and had observed how well Jesus had answered them, now came up and put a question to him. Which is the foremost of all the commandments? Jesus replied, this is the foremost. Hear, O Israel, God our God is one. You must love the Most High God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. You must love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. May we hear the wisdom in the words. Thanks be to God.
Charlotte Hope, and I'm here to speak on my sense of place in the forest. I need to give you a little background. I was hired um, to, to read leg bands on live eagles. Uh, these eagles were abandoned in the nest as chicks, and they are now adults on their breeding grounds. Uh, we put potassium wing markers on them, so they'd be easy to identify, but the eagles preened them into their feathers. And then we tried putting large color leg bands on them, on their legs, and they picked those off. Um, I spent um, my time sitting on a stool, creeping up a few yards at a time for days to gain the eagle's trust in order to get close enough to read these bands. In the forest, is dark after dawn and before dusk, listening to the complex communications of other species. It reminds me of the 1980s, living on Edisto, going to the laundromat and listening to the Gola women speaking, not knowing what the subject of the conversation was, but understanding their tone. I feel small but connected here, deep in a place that feels like no human has set foot in decades. I try to be invisible, part of the landscape. Wild turkey turkeys awkwardly fly in to roost in the trees above me. A water snake crawls over my still foot. The eagle and I are staring into each other's eyes. The eagle using her keen sight and I a telescope. We do this for hours, days. I see and hear the different tones, fighting, begging calls of her chicks in a panic tone when I am discovered by her mate. Swampy forest, water on the ground, sounds beside the birds. The amphibians, reptiles, and mammals make themselves known with their voices. So much sound, water, life, and land. It's easy to make out the rhythms being composed. I feel I belong in this place, even as a homo sapien. Such dignity the animals have, content in their own places, easy to see how the pieces fit together. I know my place here, a student, no longer an intruder, watching the instinctual balanced way of life. I am grateful and honored by all the time I had in the woods to sit silent and still. Thank you. I'm Jennifer Wicker and I'm doing a meditation on field and farm. But since field and farm have nothing to do with me, I'm going to step out of the way and let you look at the field. So what I've learned over the past year when looking at 
and being able to spend so much more time in this field and other fields is that what I thought I was doing, I wasn't doing at all. I thought I was teaching about growing, but what I was doing was growing and learning. I was learning not to cut the clover, but to let the clover grow so that the honeybees could meet every blossom and partake in as much of the water and pollen and nectar from every blossom. And I was growing in the knowledge of doing less to the field and learning more from the field. And what I thought I was doing was loving the field. When what was happening all along was that the field was loving me. The field had everything it needed. And I was the one that was lacking. The soil had everything it needed. And it provided me with the strength and the foundation that I needed to grow. So I'd like to thank the field and the farm and the plants and the soil and the clover and the roosters and the new peacock that just joined our family and the ducks who lay eggs all over the place. for growing me and teaching me and loving me. Amen. Touch the earth lightly, miss the earth gently, nourish the life of the world in our Gift of great wonder, ours to surrender, trust for the children tomorrow. Thank you.
speaking about my beloved Charleston salt marsh. So what is a salt marsh? Salt marshes are coastal wetlands that are regularly flooded and drained by seawater. They are rich and diverse and provide so many benefits. The marsh and grasses provide habitats, coastal protection from wind and erosion and fierce storms, reduction in ocean water pollution, and they even fight climate change by absorbing carbon and reducing it in our atmosphere. The marsh brings me joy and delight and also comfort. Its dependable, consistent rhythms throughout all the seasons are assuring, and each season has its own magic. In the winter, the angle of the winter sun provides a type of light on the marsh that we just don't see any other time of the year. And the water in the tidal creeks become clear, which I have, I have no, reason, no idea why. The grass becomes dormant and soft and brown, and there's a quiet sense of waiting. Then in the springtime, the bright lime green new growth in the marsh grass begins to emerge and rebirth is here. In the summer, breezy days bring movement in the long fringy grass heads. And in the fall, the grass begins to brown, but its golden seed heads provide promise of future grass and good to come. These beautiful golden grains remind me of wheat fields blowing in the wind. So while I'm in any of our God-given natural wor worlds, whether gardening or stargazing or just taking a walk, I try to put all my senses to work. And when I'm near the marsh, it's hard not to use all of my senses. It can truly be intoxicating. Some of what I might see are birds, lots of birds, way too many to list. Or I might see a full moon rise as the moonbeam seems to point my way. I might hear the oysters clicking as they reopen their shells while, they tie, while the tide comes back in. I love this sound. Oysters feed on algae in the water. Each oyster can filter up to 50 gallons of water a day. And textures and touch. I love the feel of the breeze on my face and the flatness of the water, the clumps and lumps of the oysters, the linear fine texture of the marsh grass, all give contrast. Together, their differences produce such beauty. And the last senses are taste and smell. Ah, you can guess what the first thought is, cluff mud. I have grown to love the smell and feel like I'm really back home when I return to Charleston, when I can smell it again. And I give thanks to be able to use all of my senses to take in and savor the marsh whenever I'm near it. It makes me feel alive. Nancy Kofer Shabika with an ocean meditation for Earth Day. How inappropriate to call this planet Earth when clearly it is ocean. Those are the words of writer Arthur Clarke. Making up over 70% of our planet, the ocean is energy and liquid motion, circulatory system of the planet, primal soup of life, salty as tears. Every creature climbed from it, every river ends in it, carrying remnants of mountains. We could talk about the physical and biological science of the ocean, how it moderates and moves Earth's heat, moves with the wind, moves with the moon, moves with the spin of the Earth. 
how it glows with light from the teeming legions of sea life it holds, capturing carbon through photosynthesis and in the shells of microscopic creatures that blanket its floor. A world with depths, spaces, and species still unexplored. Or we could talk about the human impacts to planet ocean, the heat of our consumption that's changing our climate. Talk about the greenhouse gases heating the atmosphere that are also heating and acidifying ocean surface waters, pouring melted polar sea ice back into its basin, shifting habitats and threatening shelled species and corals who built their reefs over thousands of years. Heat expanding its volume and disrupting the ocean circulation system that moderates our weather. Heat that threatens stronger storms and higher sea levels already advancing up marsh and shore. But instead, today for Earth Day, Ocean Day, I encourage a pause for a walk or a paddle along the ocean's edge where it moves us, calls us, and kisses our shores. We breathe in the moist salt air, watch the light, hear the shorebirds and the rolling surf. How many of us don't feel the peace of walking a cobalt blue low country beach in April? Sinking our feet in the damp ripple patterned sand, exploring the sea life washed by wind and tide, watching the play of water and light. Skimming over its waves on a board in a boat, it reminds us that we are part of a much larger flow. So for today, let's swim in it, float in it, let it rock you. It's good to feel small and go light, our outsized needs and notions calmed by a larger perspective. Immersing yourself might be your best first action leading to the changes we all need to make toward restoration and repair. If we humans really only fight to save what we love, it's time we gave planet ocean, mother ocean, some renewed cherishing. Friends, now is the time when we collect the offering in gratitude for all that is given so generously. And we remember that all the money that is collected is used to support our church, which is a house of welcome for all people. And it's also used to support our work for justice and peace in the world outside our walls. I also remind you that we have a COVID-19 relief fund and if you or someone in the circular community is struggling or suffering through the financial effects of this pandemic, you can reach out to me or any staff member confidentially, and we may be able to help. It's in that spirit that we're invited to give.
As I invite you to join me in the pastoral prayer, I also invite you to reach out and let us know how you are doing. Uh, you'll see an email address on your screen. That's a way to reach out to the spiritual care team. Uh, you can also contact me or any member of the staff confidentially, uh, and we would love to help and support each other during this time. It's in that spirit that I invite you to join me in a moment of prayer. To the God of this day, we pray our thanks for its gifts, the forest and field, marsh and sea that sustain us. Help us, we pray, to ground ourselves here. And then, when we have our breath, strong feet, underneath us. Give us our voices again. Show us our work again. Inspire us to dream again of a world where every being may flourish. That as we grieve for black lives, as we mourn Asian Americans, as we ache for immigrant families, refugee children, beautiful trans people discriminated against, and as we rend our garments for all the harm we have done to the sacred living earth, we may know that our cries are a language of love. 
Teach us to speak more clearly, to love more powerfully, to act more fearlessly in pursuit of the dream, in pursuit of the day when all of your children, every last living being, may have what they need to flourish and grow. God of this day, we pray our thanks for its miracles all around us and ask for hearts to receive and care. And as we pray this, we hold for a moment the many joys and concerns of our individual lives. And we add a prayer for our community, for all who are grieving, for all who struggle with addiction and the ones in recovery, for all who are lonely, for all who are sick and the ones caring for them, for all the world's peacemakers, and for all who now respond to the climate crisis. God be with us and give us strength. We offer our prayer in the name of Jesus who taught us that birds matter, lilies matter, black lives matter, all God's children matter. We remember him and his epic as we pray together in the way he taught us. Friends, as we go from here, let us go to love God and our neighbor, every living neighbor, and to love the earth, our one true home. Amen.